I urge the sanitation department to move out equipment from Manhattan, move it out of Manhattan, into Brooklyn, every available vehicle you got to clean this place up. I want us to look as good as Broadway in Manhattan. That's all I'm asking. No more, no less. Clean it like Broadway in Manhattan. Uh, there's no snow business like political snow business. There's the Brooklyn Borough President not too happy about the mayor's decisions on snow plows. Snowpocalypse gives way to snow politics. Top oh. line starts right now. Welcome to Top Line. I'm Amy Walter. And I am Zach Wolf. Every day at noon Eastern, we bring you the latest political news live here from our studios, Washington, D.C. Zach and I doing the heavy lifting, but not heavy plowing yet. Not heavy plowing. D the person doing the heavy plowing takes us into our first yes. Top Line. King of the tweets, Cory Booker, the Newark mayor, has uh, gone from being a Twitter superstar to a Twitter mythical superhero uh, this week. He, he has been taking uh, individual tweets from the people of Newark and, you know, arriving with diapers in hand, helping people on dialysis, catching carjackers. There is nothing this man can't do. <laughs> Amy, but do you think it really means that the streets of Newark are any cleaner than those of any other city, or is he just massaging this uh, Twitter is, status? He is brilliant with his the use of Twitter. In fact, we should probably do an entire series just on that. Of course, you can, can look at the differences here between the Cory Booker profile and then, as we saw from the Brooklyn Borough President and from the front pages of the New York Tabs, M Michael Bloomberg not getting such love. Of course, let's note one thing about the difference between Newark and New York City besides the crime rate. Newark, 278,000 people. Manhattan, 8.8 .8 million people. A little bit of a difference. But Good for, good for Cory Booker, stopping car carjackers and such. All right, next top line, it's Miller time, or maybe it's not. In Alaska, federal judge throwing out Joe Miller's last attempt to, uh, uh, to, to get himself put into the uh, Alaska, I'm sorry, to put, be put into the United States Senate. Uh, the bad news for Joe Miller, however, is that because he did lose his case, he may now have to pay a 15 thousand dollar loser fee so he loses the seat and has to pay up lisa murkowski getting set to pop that champagne cork on thursday when she will be officially sworn in and she gets to keep her seniority because it will be done before january 3rd you're talking about the bad news for joe miller i'm not sure that guy has had any good news since um since election day really no. he has nine hundred thousand uh, dollars in the bank that's good news for him for his next run correct <laughs> he could run for sitka mayor uh <laughs> next up via chicago there is no official word yet we don't know they haven't officially said but it seems pretty clear uh, that the president is going to run his re-election campaign um, if he officially re runs for re-election, which also seems clear, from Chicago, not from Washington, D.C. or the surrounding area. This is uh, uh, something new in the modern era. Presidents always run their re-election campaign from the White House. The, Amy, this is supposed to make him uh, look more grounded, symbolically a man of the people, but putting you know half your staff 700 miles away, even in this era, is that a good idea? Yeah. You know, when you're the president, it's kind of hard to not be seen as it's when you're the president you can never be the outsider you're always the president even if you went and lived in another town uh it's going to be interesting to watch how that worked out because it, it worked out great for al gore oh wait well that didn't work out so yeah. well moving to tennessee <laughs> all right uh and finally four watch out for golf balls yes that's right the president almost well he did get hit in the teeth during a basketball uh, uh game the other week and had to get stitches in his mouth now, today, we're going to show you another close call in Hawaii where a golf ball comes very close to knocking the president. And yes, we are shamelessly promoting this. Shamelessly, it is pretty. Shamelessly. Let's, let's see. There it is. Slow-mo. Slow-mo. Slow he had to move out of the way. Oh, he moved a little bit out of the way. The, the other guy in the Hawaiian shirt p playing the part of the Secret Service. That was quite, quite good. Shameless indeed. There is no news value in that, but Zero. it is fun to look at. We do have some stuff 
uh, so of, of great news value. We have Richard Sakaritas from uh, Equality Matters here, who, who can Hi, tell us. Uh, you know, there has been a big month in the in the gay rights community. First off, the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. But you know, the thing that really turned everybody's head at the end of the month was during this press conference. President Obama said he has an evolving uh, position, or he, his thoughts are evolving on the issue He's of gay wrestling. marriage. He's wrestling. He said he was wrestling with it, wrestling with it, and right. then he was constantly evolving. So what does that mean? Well, then I noticed uh, Vice <laughs> President Joe Biden. Uh, two or three days later said to Good Morning America that he thought um, that a national consensus on the issue of marriage uh, equality was inevitable. Not that he, he didn't say that marriage, uh, he didn't say that gay marriage was inevitable, he said a national consensus was inevitable, which is even, I think, better, you know, if you're a supporter of uh, equal marriage rights for everybody across the board. I mean, look, I think it, it's breathtaking, right, how quickly the public opinion has shifted in this. And we're seeing now over 50% of the American people saying that they are comfortable with, they think that uh, gays and lesbians ought to have the same rights to marry as heterosexuals. Uh, so it, the, 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 rapid, the rapidness with which the public opinion here has changed is remarkable. Uh, just five or six years ago, you know, saw numbers in the 20s. So uh, I think the president, the vice president, the Democratic Party are responding to that. You know, the Democrats have been out front on gay rights uh, forever. And this is part of that, part of an extension of that, I think. Although you did see that a number of Republicans were really w helped Don't Ask, Don't Tell, right, that crossed over. So what role do Republicans play in all this? Especially, look, they're taking control, obviously, of the House. They're going to have more power in the Senate. Can anything get done without Republican support on this? Well, there's a big debate about w what role Republicans are playing in, uh, in gay rights right now. Um, and it's you're either sort of a glass half full type person or a glass half empty type person. All right, and where person. are you? Are you? I, I, I'm definitely a glass half full because I think that uh, you see uh, Ted Olson, the former Solicitor General, bringing this very important marriage case out in uh, in California. Uh, you see people like Laura Bush saying that they think gay marriage is coming. Um, you see other very prominent Republicans, Ken Melman among others. Uh, saying that, uh, uh, you know, being comfortable enough to come out and talking about these issues. So I think that the Republicans are, there's a lot going on in the Republican field. We may even have a Republican candidate for president this year, this next time, who supports gay marriage. However, What, the really? Re they could yes, make it through a Republican I'm not going to tell you primary. who it is. I'm not going to, not who's going to make, no, in the primary, someone in the primary. Oh, okay. One of the people running in the primaries. I don't. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it will be a Republican Party plank. But on the other hand, the congressional wing of the Republican Party is much more conservative on these issues. And it is extremely unlikely in the next two years that we will get any important gay rights legislation through Congress. That's why our new group, Equality Matters, is mostly focused on developing communication strategies that are going to change hearts and minds, that are going to change hearts and minds of policymakers, but also of the public. Now the you know, but this is the most local of issues. There's a you know, correct me if I'm wrong. There's probably very little Congress can do. Uh, you know, you're going to see local localities really take the forefront on this. Is is that wrong? I mean, it, what can President Obama really put into his plank in 2012 to make the the gay rights community happy about this? Well, it's both. You're right that it is a local issue, and that you know, states and localities govern things like marriage rights and 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 a lot of these other rights that we're concerned with. But on a national, pl uh, in terms of a national platform and what Congress can do, Congress can do a lot. First of all, there's this federal anti-gay marriage law, which says that no matter what the localities do, the federal government has to tr can only recognize right. opposite-sex marriage. So that needs to be repealed. That is a, a big priority of the you know gay rights movement and of our group, uh, our group new group Equality Matters. Um, in terms of um, in in terms of the there's a lot going on in the court cases and in terms of the court court of public opinion, you know, people like President Obama carry a lot of weight and he could really lead on this. The most important thing he can do now, he and the Democratic Party and other prominent Democrats, is recognize that if you are progressive, if you're for civil rights, now you have to be for marriage. Well, do you equality. think that he is doing that right now? Is he doing I think he's on starting it? to do it. I think it's very interesting this kind of middle ground he's staked out for himself. Right, it's very unusual for a president to say publicly, uh, you know, I was here. Uh, some people think I need to be here. I'm not there yet. I'm some, somewhere sort of in the middle. I'm not exactly sure where I am. I'm wrestling with it. I'm constantly evolving. 
I mean, the truth is, is that it's very rare that we see someone having this public discussion with themselves, a president having a discussion with himself in public. So I think he's trying to send some signals. I think he's kind of trying to test the waters a little bit, try to send some signals. What if my, what if my position changed? What would people think? You know, what kind of reaction is it to people? What kind of reaction does he get to people saying that he's thinking about it? I think he's gotten a good reaction because I think the country is ready for this. I think culturally um, the country has progressed so much further on these issues of equality uh, than um, we have in Congress or in, in our politics. I mean, look at what's on TV. I mean, the, the, the high school kid on Glee has a boyfriend, a Fox show, you know? I mean, and we're talking about hospital visitation rights still in the Congress. So, All right, we have to leave it there. Richard Sakaridis, thanks so much Good for joining us. Thanks uh, for having me Thank on. you. I hope to be back soon. Of course. And